Hello. Uh, my name is Brian Aldrich, and I welcome you all to Poe Funeral. Edgar Allan Poe is dead. He died on Sunday morning, October 7th, 1849. How he spent the last week of his life, how he died, and what he died of, still remains as much a mystery as the personality of the poet himself. Tonight, we hope to set the record straight. Ask any schoolboy and he'll tell you that Poe was a writer of creepy stories and a poem about a persistent bird. Ask any moralist and he'll tell you that Poe was a drunkard wallowing in self-pity. Ask any artist touched by his genius and he'll tell you that Edgar Allan Poe was a brilliant craftsman who created and subverted genres of literature and as a critic and editor established the foundations of American literature. Since his death, artists have been attracted to Poe as much by his life as by his work. They have been seduced by the 19th century romantic ideal of the mad, tortured artist. But this is pure mythology. In fact, Poe was a pioneering, diligent, and sharply focused craftsman ahead of his own time. He made the mistake of being poor, uh, being uncommercial, being an uncompromising, honest, arrogant, and virulent critic who made a lot of enemies and a few friends. When he died, the influential and mediocre poet Rufus Griswold maligned Poe's reputation and the legends were born. Later in the 19th century, the French literati fell in love with this romantic figure and made him their savior. This served to increase Poe's popularity and manifested his renaissance, but this also perpetuated the myths about his character. Although he is best remembered by his tales of the macabre and his lushly romantic poetry, he brought the Gothic into the modern era. He originated the detective genre, experimented in science fiction, and did more than dabble in fantasy, adventure, politics, satire, the hoax, and outright comedy. Poe led the way for Ambrose Bierce, Baudelaire, Robert Louis Stevenson, Rimbaud, Bram Stoker, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, H.P. Lovecraft, Agatha Christie, Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler, John Dickinson Carr, T.S. Eliot, Robert Block, Ray Bradbury, Shirley Jackson, and Stephen King. In cinema, the genius of Poe is evidenced in the work of Jean Epstein, Alfred Hitchcock, Roger Corman, Richard Matheson, George Romero, Stuart Gordon, and David Cronenberg. Even television shows like The Twilight Zone, Columbo, and the X-Files owe their existence to Poe. Tonight, we'll let Poe, his friends, and his enemies speak for themselves. Alone. From childhood's hour I have not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source I have not taken my sorrow. I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone. And all I loved, I loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill. The mystery which binds me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form of a demon in my view. Mariah Clem to Annie Richmond, New York, October 9th, 1849. Dear Annie, my Eddie is dead. He died in Baltimore yesterday. Annie, my Annie, pray for me, your desolate friend. My senses will leave me. I will write the moment I hear the particulars I have written to Baltimore. Write and advise me what to do. Muddy. Letter from Mariah Clem to Nelson Poe. New York, October 9th, 1849. Dear Nelson, I have heard this moment of the death of my dear son, Edgar. I cannot believe it, and I have written to you to try and ascertain the facts and particulars. He has been in the South for the last three months and was on his way home. The paper states he died in Baltimore yesterday. If it is true, God have mercy on me, for he was the last I had to cling to and love. 
Will you write the instant you receive this and relieve this dreadful uncertainty? My mind is prepared to hear all. Conceal nothing from me. Your afflicted friend, Mariah Clem. silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night, while the stars that oversprinkle all the heavens seem to twinkle with a crystalline delight. Keeping time, time, time in a sort of runic rhyme to the tintinabulation that so musically wells from the bells, 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 bells from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells. What a world of happiness their harmony foretells. Through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight. From the molten golden notes and all in tune, what a liquid ditty floats to the turtle dove that listens while she gloats on the moon. Oh, from out the sounding cells, what a gush of euphony voluminously wells. How it swells, how it dwells on the future, how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. Hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells. What a tale of terror now their turbulency tells. In the startled ear of night, how they scream out their affright. Too much horrified to speak, they can only shriek, shriek, out of tune in a clamorous appealing to the mercy of the fire in a mad exposultation with the death and frantic fire, leaping higher, higher, higher with a desperate desire and a resolute endeavor now, now to sit or never by the side of the pale-faced moon. Oh, the bells, 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 what a tale their terror tales of despair. How they clang and clash and roar, what a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air. Yet the ear it fully knows by the twanging and the clanging how the danger ebbs and flows. Yet the ear distinctly tells in the jangling and the wrangling how the danger sinks and swells by the sink, sinking or the swelling in the anger of the bells, of the bells, of the bells, 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 in the clamor and the clangor of the bells. Hear the tolling of the bells, iron bells. What a world of solemn thought their modernity compels. In the silence of the night, how we shiver with affright at the melancholy meaning of their tone. For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, all of the people that they dwell up in the steeple, all alone and tolling, tolling, tolling in that muffled monotone, feel a glory in so rolling on the human heart a stone. They are neither man nor woman. They are neither brute nor human. They are ghouls. And their king it is who tolls, and he rolls, 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 a pain from the bells. And his merry bosom swells with the pain of the bells, and he dances and he yells, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme, to the pain of the bells of the bells. Keeping time, time, time in a sort of runic rhyme to the throbbing of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the sobbing of the bells, bells, bells. Keeping time, time, time as he nails, nails, nails in a happy runic rhyme to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the moaning and the groaning of the bells.